What's up, Sage Rush? Hi, and welcome to our weekly message discussion where we want to help you take the concepts from the weekend message and live them out through the week in a meaningful way. My name is Eric, and as always, I am here with Pastor Andrew. And Andrew, yes. we're in a brand new series called Are We There Yet? Do you mind saying hello to everybody and let us know a little bit about what the series is about before we get started? Hey, guys, uh, good to see you. Good to have you guys with us at lunch on noon on Mondays. It's always great to see everybody here with us. Uh, we kicked off a brand new series called Are You There Yet? Which is a conversation that we have frequently in the Poe minivan or car, <laughs> like every time we take a road trip. But the whole idea is, man, we've been talking about parenting and just kicked off this brand new series. And it's all about the questions that are most important to talk to your kids about. Mm -hmm. And this last week was all about, man, what's the importance and what are you really living for? And so we started that conversation, kicked it off, and it was a great start. Yeah, what I love about what Pastor Todd talked about was it you can't really answer these questions for your kids or have them answer it unless you've had them answered yourself. So yeah. whether you have kids, whether you don't have kids, whether you're just a big kid at heart, this, these are important questions for us to answer personally. So I think yeah. although we've wrapped it in like a parenting series, this yeah. is really a series about life for all of us. So if anyone's willing, you know, if you're thinking, well, I don't have kids, so I'm going to check out, don't do don't that. Don't do that. Because these are essential questions that all of us need to answer for a meaningful life. Now, before we go through this, I, we've just got to mention this because last night we had our VIP oh, service. Oh, man, it was so good. And if you didn't check it out, I'm sure someone is going to put the link in the comments below to let you know. But Andrew, what was your favorite part of the VIP service? Um, I like the lip sync battle. That was my favorite part of the whole service. That didn't happen. No, we didn't get to dance this year. No. We have moved online for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I love just hearing about how God has worked through our uh, team members here at Sagebrush because, man, in spite of this pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, God has just on the move. And seeing now that we've gone from a church of about 15,000 people to a church of 75,000 people crazy. who are tuning in online every week and coming in person, I'm just amazed at how God works right. through his people and how... God is using you God guys. God is using Siri. In God is here, using so Siri. We're... Sorry for my phone. Eric told me to turn it off, but it, it popped back on. But no, I'm amazed at how God is just working through our people here at our church and just how many great things. And man, it was great. How many people tuned in to the service, Eric? Uh, we had about 11,000 viewers. Oh my goodness. If you take all that, because we had a bunch of people that were watching as families, people watching as their small group or um, as serving teams together. And so with the views and multiplying for multiple people watching, it was about 11,000 people. So amazing. Yeah. And I'm just so grateful for all of our volunteers. You truly make Sagebrush what it is. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't do this mission of knowing Christ and making Christ known without every single one of you guys. So big shout out to all of our volunteers here. Thanks for all that you do. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I think we were, I mean, really, we were going back and forth. We we're going to flip a coin to see if we were just going to reenact the whole VIP service just as like a two-man yeah, show it would here. Be fun. Or if we were going to go into the message discussion. Uh, cooler heads prevailed in yes. the end, and we decided to go through the message discussion. So every week, what we want to do is help you take some of those principles that we learn on the weekend, and we're going to discuss them here. We're going to go through the small group study, and we'll talk a little bit about why small groups are so important. But what we want you to do is no matter what, if you are watching this with your small group, if you're watching on your own, or if you're watching live on Facebook right now, you can always hit pause, answer the question. Sure. You can find whoever's around you right now and just ask them the question when we ask, or let us know in the comments so we can respond to you as well. Well, so Andrew, why is it so important that we get involved in a small group? Well, small groups are the bread and butter of our church, if, as I've said before, and they're the way that we help you to grow closer to Jesus Christ. Man, if you try to just come on the weekend service and you think that that's enough, it's honestly not. Even though we have an incredible pastor, we learn so much every single weekend. Man, the weekend is not sufficient to help you to grow daily cl mm -hmm. closer to Jesus Christ. So, alone. Uh, alone, just yeah. by itself. Man, you need uh, other things that are going to engage you, and you need opportunities just to talk about. And so that's why I always love Monday, because I get to talk with my buddy Eric yep. all about the questions that we've dealt with over the weekend, and man, we could just take it deeper. Exactly. So again, if you're watching, you can always hit pause, let us know in the comments, respond right away. We typically start with an icebreaker just to get the conversation going. So the icebreaker this week is, who have you seen model excellent parenting and what did they do so well? Let us know in the comments. Andrew, what do you think? Uh, for me, that's my good buddy, Jeff McDonough. And uh, Jeff McDonough, he's one of my best friends and he lives in Portland, Oregon on a farm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense for Portland. Uh, right. He lives on a 
farm right. raising goats and uh-huh. everything else. Yeah. Uh, but Jeff is actually a licensed counselor. Oh. And uh, he works as a middle school counselor right now. And he's just so patient with mm-hmm. his kids. I mean, every time they have a problem or they have an issue, both he and his wife just take special times just to sit down and to talk through every single issue. And a lot of times uh, I get angry or hangry, huh. you know, with my children because hmm. I'm hungry a lot of right. late. Um, but man, I don't take the time to really pull my kids aside, really have a conversation about what's going on inside of them. But man, this is something that my buddy Jeff does. Sure. So incredible. What about you? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, hopefully this isn't like uh, cheating here, but I think my parents did a really great job. Um, and, and the reason why is I think they set me and my sister up really well for adulthood, number one. And then number mm-hmm. two, like my mom, she lost her mom when she was in high school. Wow. And so, you know, I think I draw a lot of like what I do in parenting from my own parents as as a parent. And she really didn't have that mother figure to kind of show hmm. her and teach her how to be a mom. And she was an excellent mom. And then my dad lost his dad like right during his college years. And huh. so as they both say, it's like they don't, they've never really had a model of that sort of like my dad would say a, a dad to his son okay. adult relationship. Yeah. Right. And so the fact that they, you know, have still figured it out so well in a way that I, I think that help. I mean, I, uh, people who know me might disagree, but I think they set me up well to be a moderately <laughs> okay functioning so adult. So and it's really a lot of the same things. I don't know for you parents, you hear yourself repeating the same things your parents said to you, to your kids, and you kind of like, <gasps> All the time. oh no, I just did I've that. I've become my parents. It's. <laughs> It's so bad. That's good. But yeah, I think, but seeing people who are patient with their kids, I kind of look at them like they've got a different superpower. Oh, so good. Anyway. Okay. So uh, go ahead. If if you want to answer in the comments here, we can go ahead and share that as well. But here's the next question is, what is the goal of parenting for you? Todd talked about a little bit this weekend, but I want to know, Andrew, what do you think for your kids? What's the goal of parenting? Yeah. For me, it's very simple. I want to keep them alive. Yeah. That's what we try very hard at the Poe House to do, is to keep them alive every single day. Uh, No, the goal in parenting for me is to help my kids to love God even more than I do. Mm. And so, man, every day is just kind of dedicated towards passing on that faith and that love for God that I have to my own children. And so, man, that's kind of what I wake up with in the morning, and that's... When I put them to bed, that's what I pray for them is that they would, they'd far surpass my own faith, mm-hmm. that they take my faith even further than what I have right now and that they would grow. And obviously I want them to be productive members of society. I don't want them to live in my basement right. or well, we don't really have basements in Albuquerque, uh, but don't want them right. to live at home forever. Mm-hmm. I want them to grow up to be successful and everything else. But man, my main focus is I really do want them to love God more than than I do. What yep. about for you, Eric? Yeah, uh, I agree with your first one is keeping them alive, whether yes. that's uh, external or caused by parents here. Calvin and Oliver are pretty yeah. hard, dude. It's, so uh, yeah, they, uh, they're pretty hardcore. Yeah, there's a new bruise every single week, and it's usually from somebody pushing somebody else off the swings or whatever. So, you know, we're just explaining a lot of brotherly fights together. So there trying you go. to I'm I'm basically like, you know, I'm in I'm an in ring referee breaking them up and there you go. telling them what okay. No, but seriously. Eight and seven for boys is is yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough age. It's rough and tumble for sure. So uh but aside from that, I think uh, Todd brought up a couple of good things that put into words probably better than I could. Yeah. You know, talking about leaving a legacy. I, I want them to live a life of significance where they're going to leave a legacy. Yeah. And obviously that starts with a thriving relationship with Jesus, right? Yeah. That's number of one. Course. But then too, when Todd was talking about sheep and being leaders and everything like that, like I want them to be leaders and That's not true. just follow uh, whether it's society around them or their mm-hmm. friends. You know, one of the big fears is he was talking through that golden age of parenting and when you switch from your kid's like really looking at you yeah, as the hero as the hero to now their friends. And it's like, man, that's, that's a big time that I think we really want to set up my kids well. So they understand, you know, I, I know they're not always going to look to me um, to be the hero, but I want to make sure they have good discernment on the types of people they should follow and how they should lead when those things aren't happening. Right. So yeah. uh, let me see if I can look through some of these answers here. Um Roz says, I just want my daughter to know she has so much to give to her community and that through God, all things are possible. Um, Another one is, I want my kids to have a better life than I have Mm. and uh, agree with you to love God more than I do. So a lot of people liking um, 
those principles as well. So awesome. Keep putting your answers down here. Uh, but what are the types of things that you think God wants us to point our children towards? Yeah, I, I think that we need to point our children towards having a life of purpose and mm. a life of meaning. And again, like you said before, leaving that legacy that really yeah. matters, um, not being like everybody else. And that was uh, kind of the real crushing part of the message this weekend was talking right. a lot about peer pressure, yes. which I love Todd's joke about the woman who was 102 years old, uh-huh. which she doesn't have any more peer pressure right. because everybody else has died. Um, but man, I loved what he talked about with peer pressure because kids are up against so much. Yes. And so this idea of, man, them setting out their own track and leaving a legacy and not being like everybody else was so profound, uh, I think, this last weekend. And, man, I I know I send my kids to school every day. And, Mm -hmm. man, I have the constant same prayer for them is, God, help them to be a light for you and help them to stand up for you. Help them not to be like everyone else. And so I think that that's what God wants, too, is he wants us to love him first above everything else. And I think that he wants us to stand firmly on those values. What about you? Yeah, I think for me, uh, and I, I had a pastor, well, a fr- I mean, I guess pastor and friend tell me this a while back with with his kids. And, you know, he brought it back to Genesis and, and thinking about what was one of the first interactions that God had with Adam and Eve in the garden that was recorded, right? Mm-hmm. He said to them, like, the whole serpent thing and the fruit, like, go back and read it. It's, you know, you should really know good. from the flannel graphs from, you know, when you went to... I can pull those out later. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, right? So they, they ate the apple, they sinned, and they went hiding, and then the response. And one of the first things God said to them is like, who told you you were naked, right? There was this mm-hmm. shame that entered yep. that had never been there before. And I think that's been one of the things that I'm trying to help my kids point to where they find their source of meaning and their value, Correct. right? And pointing that towards God. And so I like the comment before, um, you know, saying that, uh, you know, looking to God for those things. And I think that... Um, Maybe it's not even healthy for them to go like, oh, I'm going to look to my parents yeah. about that, but really to point them to like your your source of value, mm-hmm. the thing that you're aspiring to, the source of your your own values and the type of things that you want to do. And so that's really where it is. And we're my wife and I, we're actively trying to avoid them taking on that sort of uh, shame from those external forces mm-hmm. so we can really point them to who they are in Christ. That's so good. So, uh, okay, let's see if anyone has any comments. Go ahead and enter them here below, but we're going to open up the Bible. We're going to be in Deuteronomy, uh, which I'm sure that's just regular for most of you, just went through Deuteronomy the the last week. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9. It says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God and the Lord uh, Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are on the road and when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house Mm -hmm. and on your gates. Now, Andrew, I know you're going to give us some background about what's going on in this chapter, but the important question we want to get to is what do you think it looks like for someone to love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? Yeah. Well, I love this passage of scripture in Deuteronomy. In Hebrew, it's called the Shema, Mm -hmm. uh, which is this opportunity for us to really listen to God. Yeah. So it was meant for the Israelites to take a pause, Mm -hmm. to really talk about what's most important. And in fact, Jesus Christ, when he walked the earth and was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He quotes this exact same passage of scripture in two of the different gospels. And so we see that, man, this is so important and so critical for us, not just for the Israelites, but for us, as we make sure to, to, to kind of focus in on what matters, because this is a passage of scripture that talks about, man, don't just keep this for yourself, but pass this on to Mm. your children, put this on the doorpost of your house. And the Israelites still do this to this day. Um, I think it's really important that it talks about all these different parts, where it talks about loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, because Mm -hmm. it's all inclusive. When it talks about the heart, that's really dealing with the idea of, man, the choices that you make, allowing those choices to honor God. When it talks about the soul, it talks about what are you really passionate about in life? Man, what are the things that uh, make your heart speed up? What do you get excited about? What types of things do you cry over? Mm -hmm. Those are the soul type things. When it talks about your mind, it talks about what what you think about with your mind. What are you dwelling upon and what are you thinking about every single day? And when it talks about your strength, it really talks about the idea of, man, what are you putting effort into? Mm -hmm. And so really basically it's saying, God doesn't want just part of you. He wants all of us. Yes. Every single part from our head to our toe. He wants every part of us to love him. Yeah, and I think you hit, you know, 
all the big ones there. And I think if you if you look at it, then the very next verse says you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly, oh, so right? True. So heart, soul, mind, strength. Um, you know, what does that look like practically? You gave us some examples, but uh, I've always heard it said, like, look at your calendar and look at your checkbook, although... Yeah. M- Nobody ever looks at their checkbook anymore. But look at your bank account, there you know, you and your, your online your bank organizer, account. right? And figure out what are you committed to, and that's where you'll figure it out. So, like, where so are you true. spending your time? What are you spending those efforts? And then I would also say, what is your mental real estate? What's taking up up, up residence in your mental that's real so estate? True. For some of us, it could be anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. We're worrying about the things that God has already figured out, yep. right? Uh, it could be anger about other people when we're worried about uh, how much we don't like someone that God God loves, Mm -hmm. you know, exactly those sorts of things. And then generosity wise, when you look at the amount of money that comes in, whether that's a lot or a little or the amount of money you have or the resources that you have, uh, are you using that to bless other people and to forward God's mission or is that just for yourself? So I would say like, are you showing God love with all of those things? Mm Yeah. Would be important here. So and true. that's the thing that you want to pass on to your kids. And I love my kids' age. I think you're probably kind of in that same where they start asking you those questions. Uh-huh. And they're tough questions. They are. Right? Like this last weekend, uh, my oldest son, we went out and he wanted a toy because we were going to get something else. And I said, okay, um, I will buy you something. He said, how, how much money do you have? <laughs> that's a good question. Right? Like, how do you answer that for your kids? Because I know what he wants to know is like, what's yep. his budget that Correct. he can spend how on? How much is dad willing to kick down? Yeah. And th- those are the types of things. And, and it started a whole conversation over what, how we get money yep. and what we as a family do with our money. Oh, that's so true. Anyway, okay. Moving on to our next question uh, is why was it so important for both the Jewish people and for us to pass this love on to our children? Yeah. Well, the Jewish people understood that their faith was just one generation away but from being forgotten altogether. Right. And so if they didn't pass it on to their children, man, they would abandon the truths of what they had learned. They'd stop following the law. And what's interesting is Deuteronomy is a book of basically a message that Moses preached right before they went into the promised land. So this is his last words. And so they have this book of the Bible that tells them all the right things to do, and they didn't do it. They didn't pass that same love for God that they had onto their own children. They constantly fell back generation after generation and had to be reminded yep. of putting God first over and over again. But, you know, God spelled it out very clearly in his word. Man, if you pass this on to your own children, their life will go well. If they follow me, if they live in alignment with me, man, their life will go well. But man, if they live outside of my will and outside of my law, they are going to have a hard time. Yeah, and I think for me when I'm looking at this too, I just start to think about what are the things that you're actually passing on to your children? Oh, so true. Because they pick up a ton of stuff, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. Think about the first time your kid said a word that you didn't want them to say, and you realized it was because it came out of your mouth or someone around you, right? You know, oh, yeah. that's a conversation. Think of the first time they reacted poorly or, the, or you know, like when my youngest son gets upset about things, it's like I'm looking in a mirror and I'm like, oh, man. Oh. What am I, what am I passing on to my kids? And so you think about, they're going to pick things up and you're passing things on passively, whether you know that or not. And so what are you doing intentionally to do those things? Which is why I think in Deuteronomy, it's so, there's so much of this command language, so much of this, repeat this again and and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. All of these different things. It's talking about being intentional Mm -hmm. with your children. And so that's why, uh, you know, parents, no matter what age your kids are, and I think Todd did a great job bringing it up. Yes. Like, if you haven't started yet, it's... It might get awkward, but it's it's not not too too late. late. Yeah. You know, I think with my parents, like, we didn't go to church uh, until I was in, like, sixth grade. Okay. And I do remember it was weird the first time stepping into a church because I'm a sixth grader. Yeah. You know, it's not like kids' church. Yeah. And, but, like... I thank them for that dedication because mm-hmm. I wouldn't be where I am today with my faith so true. unless that happened. Uh, okay. Anything else on that topic? Are you ready to move no, on? No, let's move on, bro. Okay. Great. Keep it moving. Uh, okay. let's. We're going to read the next um, the next section of Scripture. It's going to be Psalm 119, thir- uh, cha- uh, verse 37 through 40. So verse 37, I turn my eyes from worthless things and give, uh, turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Reassure me of your promise made to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways for your regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. 
All right, Andrew, what worthless, wasteful things do you find yourself participating in? And is there anything in your life that needs to be abandoned? Now, don't be afraid. Just go ahead and put those in the comments. Like, what are some things that are just worthless, either time wasters or other things you're participating in that need to be abandoned? What do you think? Yeah, I'll pass on this one. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll just wait till. We'll no, see. I'm just we'll kidding. We'll just pull all the people in the room I was, here. I was reading through this question beforehand, Eric, going, oh, crud. Yeah. Oh, man. What am I going to say? Oh, we're uh, out of time. No, just I, kidding. I, I think for me, I get sucked into a lot of times where I'm on my iPhone uh -huh. uh, mindlessly, yeah. whether it's mindlessly being on Facebook, and maybe you cruised through Facebook today and you found this and you've been watching this, but there's times where we just do mindless things on our phone, whether it be video games or anything like that. And I find uh, I get bored a lot or, man, when I'm real stressed out, I will spend more and more time on my phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is just not time well spent. And sure. at times my wife and my kids will grab my phone and check my screen time, which is always very humbling mm -hmm. uh, because I spend a lot of time on it. And I think that there's times where it's just worthless things. And I, yeah. I could do better uh, with this. And my wife usually watches these weekly message reviews and she reminds me honey i love you good to see you i'm sorry i know i spend too much time on my phone what about you eric let's switch over to eric no i think you hit them all uh i think we're good with whatever you <laughs> of just course. said no. of course eric i knew it was gonna happen <laughs> so here's the thing because i'm in marketing communication doing a lot of our online stuff i spend a majority of my work time on this thing thank you eric right so i'm saying already it's all about it. work yeah so i'm usually working no but i, I do a lot of mindless stuff uh, online, and that's obviously a time waster. I think what I would add to that, which I, you probably agree um, that you're in the same boat, is I, I spend a lot of my mental real estate mm. on worthless things and things that I think are important or, you know, times where I'm um, not thinking the best of other people, times where maybe I'm getting anxious, times where I'm getting angry. I mean, those would be the two things for me, the two A's that, that take up space that are worthless for me is that anxiety over things that I can't control Correct. that I need to let go and give to God and that anger over the things that uh, maybe I feel I'm entitled to mm -hmm. that aren't mine to begin with or That's the true. expectations I have of other people. And so, the and maybe you agree, and if you do, you can let me know in the comments, but for some of you, you agree with me and you're thinking through those things that are worthless to even just spend your mental energy on thinking. It's that opinion uh, of, uh, of that other person. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member, an in-law, yeah. perhaps. Um, right? It's those expectations that you're putting on others that they don't meet up to that now you feel like they owe you something because they didn't do what you thought. And that, that anger, that anxiety Correct. takes up. So those yeah. are the two big things for me that I would say. I mean, obviously there's a bunch of physical things that you can give up that are worthless, but I think if I could, if I can maintain control of uh, the worthless time and energy I spend in my own head... Uh -huh. I think the whole world would be a better place. Yeah, I think that, that we can get sucked into those things mm -hmm. so quickly. Yep. And I think to work sometimes, you yeah. know? And I mean, the hard thing for me is that my job is a pastor, mm -hmm. and so my job is worthwhile, and it's all about eternal things. Right. But I think very easily we can get stuck, especially in this environment that's very intense, into just being workaholics, right. where we just work all the time, and our mental space is all about work. And I have to be reminded that I have to be fully present at mm -hmm. home and that I have to kind of put this on pause sometimes when I go at home and when I'm thinking about work and everything else. And yeah. um, obviously heaven and hell are on the line here. Right. So, man, it can dominate a lot of our thinking at church. Uh, but I have to make time just to be fully present with my children too. Yeah. And I think this, uh, you know, some of these lockdowns the last couple of months that we've been going through has really helped me put some things into perspective because like I used to, like sports was a huge thing. And then all of a sudden yep. when you just didn't have sports... I was like, oh, I'm, I mean, I miss it, but I didn't really miss it. And then yeah. when stuff started coming back, I was like, ah, I'm not really, not really as rabid of a fan watching yeah. it all the time. Right. So there were some of those types of things and you really just get a new perspective. So I would say if there's anything like that for you, let us know in the comments. So that way we can learn from it too, of like, what are some things that maybe you've refocused on yeah. uh, and other things that you're able to do with your kids when yes. you have to think about it in a different them way. Into it. Yeah. Right. Where you can't just like send them a tablet or do whatever else and Correct. move on to something else. Okay, uh, last question here. Uh, most people are saying phone, social media, phone, TV, phone is a big one. Um, so it's such a great tool, but it can also be something that holds us back as well. True. Last question. How can you communicate the importance of this message from Psalm 119 to your children and to those who are like children to you? I uh, Honestly, I love Todd's homework for this weekend of just taking the time to really pray with your kids mm -hmm. and gathering them together, sit with them one-on-one. -on -one. 
and taking time just to pray very seriously for them and not just praying those simple prayers. Because I always get caught up in the repetitive things. Yeah. Of God, help them to have a good day tomorrow, help them to sleep well, all those different things. Uh, but we really have to pray big, hairy, audacious prayers over our children, mm -hmm. that God would use them as a light in our community and use them to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And I love praying those types of things for my kids and use that as an opportunity to encourage them and to value them for what God's done in their life. And right. man, I, I just really have taken that seriously of late. And after hearing the message this weekend, that was the challenging thing for me. What about for you? Yeah, well, we, we actually just had a... Um kind of an example of that last night because, you know, my wife and I will take turns putting the kids to bed and everything like that. And uh, and they're sleeping in the same room um, and they've got bunk beds. And so if we leave them to their own devices, mm -hmm. they're, again, more fighting, more bruising, more crying, which is never a good thing in yeah. our house. Uh, but my wife was telling me, she said that uh, my oldest, um, you know, was praying and he said he, said he was praying to have uh, good sleep tonight, so that way he doesn't have uh, any meltdowns or any problems at school tomorrow, mm. so he can have a great day. That's and it's good. like that was something that, especially after the weekend, I was like, oh, ah, oh, that's so great because he's, you know, even even in his rudimentary understanding is yep. already praying for those things. And then the same thing, you know, my younger son uh, sometimes deals with nightmares and problems sleeping. Yeah. And so, and the same thing is like he prayed for that. So going to God and asking Him for mm -hmm. the for the things that you want. And I think so many times, you know, we're putting worthless things into our lives and not remembering that God is the source of the only things that matter. Mm -hmm. And to go for him, go to Him to ask Him for those things, and it really put it in perspective for me, so good. for them on kind of the stuff that I, I would never say. Okay, God, I just hope that I don't have any nightmares tonight, right? You know, it's like, but mm -hmm. for them, that's a big thing. And so for me, how can I be present both in the needs that they have and understand that God cares deeply for their needs and mm -hmm. that I should too? Yeah. And then also, what are the needs that maybe I think are too small or insignificant that I'm not even asking for God? And how can I model that to my children mm -hmm. as well? So those would be the two big things for me. Anything else uh, for you, Andrew? No, I think that those are the main things for me and, uh, man, what I need to improve on. But, man, we can always improve as parents. Yeah, yeah so uh, whether you're sitting here and you're a parent and you want to take up uh, Todd's homework and, you know, think about praying over your kids and praying for your kids, you could do that. If you're not a parent, Andrew, do you have any suggestions for people who aren't parents during this series, what they need to do to kind of stay involved and engaged? Yeah, I would say if you're not a parent, God has always put you in places where you're going to have an impact on children, mm -hmm. whether that be uh, that you have nieces or you have nephews or you have children in your life that are just within your sphere. Uh, maybe you're a school teacher and man, you've got this opportunity to pour yes. into kids and man, they need to see good models of people who love Jesus. Now, that's all people. They need mm. to see good models as children who are coming up. And I know for me, I had some role models beyond even my parents mm -hmm. who are followers of Jesus yes. Christ that I always looked up to, that I always said, man, that person really loves God. And they spent time with me and they cared for me. And as a result of that, I think I'm the man that I am today yep. because they poured into me. And so I'd say, man, never underestimate your power to impact another person's life. Yeah. And I would say the same thing, because if you, if you think about it, when you go from that like golden age of parenting that Todd talked about where their parents are the number one, to now shifting to external forces. Uh, oh, yeah. I agree with you. It wasn't just my friends that I looked to. Yep. It was other adults that, whether it was my aunt and uncle, or whether it was a coach, or a teacher, or or a, a neighbor, or a parent of a friend, mm -hmm. like they impacted my life in so many amazing ways. And so as a parent of young kids, I'm still in that golden age. It's debatable sometimes whether yes. or not they listen to me. But right <laughs> yes. at that, at that, you know, precipice between when they're going to start looking elsewhere. I need you, and I think Andrew would say the yes. same. Like we need we you, need you. Yes. whether you're a parent or not. We need you to model these things, and I think, as Todd said, to like settle these questions for yourself first. Yep. Because whether you had great parents or whether you had a bad childhood, whether you had maybe not so great role models, mm -hmm. like God still loves you and cares for you, and these questions are still things that we can use individually. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm still working these things out. Correct. For me. Yes. So that's what I would encourage you over the next couple of weeks is stay involved, stay engaged, and look for opportunities where God can either use these questions in your own life mm -hmm. or into the people that you influence around you. Yeah. And I want to say thanks to all the children's workers at our church because, man, they have loved on my children yes. for all these years yes. and cared for them and poured into them. And, man, that leaves a, a lasting impact on my own kids. So thank you, guys. Exactly. And if you're a parent uh, and we've got kids, we've got an event coming up. Um 
the 28th through the 31st, right here in the Albuquerque area. It's our drive-through spooktacular. Yes. Um, and so it's going to be a great event to come down to. It's going to start after dark. You can check that out at sagebrush.church slash drive-through. It's going to be just an event for us here because we know so many things are getting canceled. And yes. then uh, the same thing, we just had our baptism weekend this past weekend, which you know we talked about a little bit. If you're interested in getting baptized or if there's somebody in your group mm-hmm. that needs to get baptized, make sure they sign up for our next one, sagebrush.church slash baptism. Anything else you've got for anybody here? Yeah, I would just challenge you guys who are parents to take some time to do some evaluation of your own relationship with your kids. And mm-hmm. man, as you're putting that together, just you know, take some time to encourage your children. Yep. Share with them their strengths and what they're doing right and just how they're doing as kids. And man, use it as an opportunity to encourage them this week. Yep. And if you're looking for help as a parent, or maybe you're not a parent, you're looking for a community, we'd love to get you plugged into a small group. Yes. Let us know in the comments, or somebody's going to post the link to let you know where you can sign up for small groups. You can find it on the app, uh, or call us or text us 505 922 9200. We would love to get you plugged in. On behalf of Andrew, I'm Eric. We will see you guys next week.